Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome in the name of Yahweh, Abba, God, who called David. And in response, David danced before Yahweh with all his might. While he and his whole house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh, we shout and the sounds of trumpets. I am Reverend Mele Damwe Bao Aho, your pastor, serving here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church, pronouns she, her. I am delighted to warmly welcome our hybrid worship service, which is accessible online all over the world and in person. Greetings and welcome to this morning's worship. I warmly invite you, all present, and remind you that you are beloved. Let us diligently prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls for worship. Come, let us worship. Good morning. I am Adam. And I'm Gretchen. Please join us in the call to worship. All are welcome in the house of the Lord. Find here the hospitality of radical fellowship. Worship with clean hands and pure hearts. Daddy. We are lifted up by the King of glory. We are adopted into the family of Christ. Leap with joy before our God. Let us pray. God of abundance and mystery, the earth and all that is in it belongs to you. Your voice is in the whirring sound of cicadas, singing of your glory in choirs too numerous to count. Your face is in the tall, sturdy sunflowers, turning their yellow petals toward the light of your splendor. Your touch is in the rain that splashes on hot sidewalks, the steamy mist rising again toward the clouds, the water running downward toward rivers and sea. Like David, who danced before the Ark of the Covenant, our hearts and bodies too leap with joy when you call us, and the sounds of music and laughter fill the air as we thrill to your movement of your Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Holy One, who has blessed us in Christ and chosen us to be your children so that we might live for the healing of the world. Amen. 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 Hello, everyone. My name is Roger Ingalls. He, him. Um, I sometimes remember to wear my name tag, so I will encourage you to wear yours as well. Um, I didn't grow up in the church, and when people would ask me to sing songs whose words I didn't know, I go, well, what am I singing? What am I professing as I sing? And this song is called El Shaddai, and it is a beautiful pop song written in the 80s. Yep, that's right. Um, and the words of the chorus are El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yana Adonai, Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Erkem Kana Adonai. So I want to translate the words. El Shaddai means God Almighty. El El Yan is the Most High God. Na Adonai is O Lord. And Erkem Kana, we will love you. So um, sometimes... Doing worship presents surprises to us. Can I, can I give that to you? Thanks. Presents surprises to us. The surprise this morning was that Jim Peterson would not be joining us. He has unfortunately contracted COVID. 
Um, he was originally going to sing this song. He came to practice with us and we had a great time. I said, we would love to support you as a band in doing this song. So I was preparing to support him doing the song, singing a harmony part and playing guitar. Well, I didn't find out that Jim wasn't coming until I walked in the building this morning. But late last night, Laura Lee, back here, say hello, Laura Lee, who played your lovely prelude, um, says, hey, my plans have changed. I can join you on Sunday. I say, please do. <laughs> and it turns out that she does this song quite, quite well. So uh, let's listen to the words of this and sing along uh, where you feel you can. <laughs> like to invite our children to please come forward for our children's time. Absolutely, Kate. Join us. Yeah, move up, move up. So 
today, our sermon today, we will focus on King David, and I am sure that most of you have heard of David from your Sunday school, right? And now, I had been thinking, what should we talk about? So we will talk about courage and fear when it comes to leadership, when it comes to each individual, but then we will see how uh, David's faith had been the, the strength for him, and I believe that is a good start for us. Next week, I will modify our stories a little bit different um, uh, in, in a way to maybe perhaps bring the curriculum forth to some of you, but I will, um, I'll talk about that next week. So David and Goliath. Um, David was not a king when he grew up. You knew that David was um, bestowed and uh, anointed for, for that role as a king. So here is David and Goliath. But the main point here, it's really amazing. I brought some kind of uh, rocks and stones. Can you imagine? Do you th we're going to get into these stories, but then I will ask you which of these that you think that David most likely used for the time that he was called up to go and face Goliath. So here's, um, David was really amazing. He was the youngest of eight Jews, children of Jesse. He grew up as a Jewish Israelite. And um, during the day, David, he was working and staying in their farm, kind of looking um, and be the shepherd for their sheep. And then um, it, that's during the day. And there was a time the first king of Israel was Saul, um, that he um, went through a, a time of mental, mental needs, help and support in his soul. So they, the, the people of Israel, his um, leadership saying, maybe you need someone to sing for you. And then they, that's how David was invited to the palace. So during the day, he was making some swing string or whatever that is with stones to keep and protect the sheep. So one day, there was a lion who was carrying one of the sheep, and then David had to find a way to protect the, lo the, the sheep from the lion. And then he used his tool or weapon. It's just very simple to um, attack the lion and kind of swing it and then hit him on the forehead and then got the sheep back. Um, so that's how David was using. He was young at the time, maybe 15 or so. But then during the night, he had to go to the palace and play his music, the harp, to the king. He loved it. The king um, felt so peaceful when David brought the harp and, and played the music. But because of his faith, uh, he was strengthened by God to use his talent, not only during the day protecting the sheep for his father's family and for the community, but then also he has to use his talent. Some of our youth members here, Lily and Rory, they are playing music for us. And that's what he did during the night in the palace. So that's what David did. And one day, there were wars around their neighborhood um, cities, the Philistines. And then Goliath was one of the giants armor kind of a person that came with armor around him and saying that if I'm going to beat you or if I'm going to be in victory, that's mean you're going to be slavery under my protection uh, of his Philistines community. 
David heard about that, and then he thought, ah, that's a concern. You're coming with um, swords, but I have the armor of God. I have a living God. So he went to um, Saul, the king, and said, I would like to be the one that go and meet Goliath. They look at David. He was small. He was young. But then he said, look, I am bringing the living God with me. So the Saul, Saul, the king, decided, yes, he responded, yes, you can do that, but we'll put some kind of armor to protect you. He put it on. It was too heavy, and he said, ah, that's not me. I'm not used to it. I'm not going to do a good job. So the king um, thought, yeah, that would be wonderful. Gave him a sword swing. It's too heavy for him. So David came forth to meet Goliath with his swing and stone. So the question to you, which one of these, these have its own stories that you think David might have been in use for his swing when he came forth to meet Goliath. Eric? The second one. The second one. The left. Amen. That is right. Wasn't really big because I'm with you, Eric. If, If it is this one, it's too heavy cannot really swing it around and it will be slow. And this one is small but mighty. So David was using that and he was swinging around and around and around and it and got in the forehead of Goliath. And then he fell off, fell down, and that was it for him. So the moral of the story that we come to church most of the time and often time to feed our soul. But then also, what can we do for ourselves as a purpose that God puts you here on earth as a purpose? There are good things that are bigger than you and me that God wants you to do. These rocks, you're going to learn more about it in the New Testament. Today, we will learn about... Um, the, how the David in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible um, speaks to us in our way of life. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your stories. David, that you chose him for a purpose so that he grew up to see and see through things in his community and families and how to protect the animals. <coughs> Teach our children, O oh God, with any of those leadership in mind, school, during their time of vacation in the summertime. Guide them and be with them to see what their hearts are passionate about doing, not only as a purpose for themselves, but how they can put that forth to impact your community. (coughs) Be with them and be with the parents and also the Sunday school teachers and also our youth minister that we look forth to bring in the future to guide them and be with us in nurture your children. In your name we pray. Bless them. Amen. Go forth. Thank you. So I was saying how wonderful it was to be surprised um, that Laura Lee was able to join us. And then later that morning, two lovely young ladies walked into the room and go, we're here, we can sing it. By the way, I have always told them you can always show up on Sunday and sing the melody because they are such wonderful singers and lovely presence. So thank you, Lily and Rory, for being here. I want to tell you a little bit about this song because today this song could be easily misinterpreted. The title of the song is Marching to Zion. And uh, things aren't so hot in the area that's often called Zion. Well, they're hot, but they're not, they mean like not so good. This isn't really about us marching to Israel or to Palestine. This is about us marching to heaven. This is about our combined journey 
as a congregation, as any Christian that you meet along your journeys, of we're doing this together. And uh, to that end, I want you to sing it with us. Come, we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne, and just surround the throne. Here we go. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. You did that great. I expect you to do it better next time. Let those who refuse to sing, who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad may speak their joys abroad let it rip we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god the hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly field, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets, we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground, we're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high to fairer worlds on high and we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god let's do that again we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. You did wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is our time for prayers of the people. Uh, yes. Thank you, Karen. Yes. scandal going on in, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. A shooting took place during a president, uh, during the president uh, re-election. Yes. And Donald Trump, you know, he got shot right in the ear. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, prayer for the gun violence in our country that we're not expecting, especially with our former president um, Donald Trump, remember that in your prayer. Any other requests? Yes, uh, Roger. A prayer for uh, Jim Peterson. Uh, I know he had a very uh, long and taxing week last week at the uh, band camp at the school. Um, so I'm sure he probably picked up some violence there. So he was out in COVID. And a prayer for his quick recovery. And uh, I know he's entertained. 
Uh, Roger is lifting up Jim uh, Peterson and also Karen earlier, it was Jim Relka. I had an opportunity to call some of our members last night and pray with them, but also ask their permission to lift up their names. Um, one is Joe and Sam, um, the couple, and also Carol. Uh, we lift them up in our prayers. Yes. Uh, let's remember Eileen, a um, friend who has cancer. We remember and keep those in our mind with their health. Yes. Uh, prayers and condolences for the friends and family of my friend Gary, who I brought up a month or two ago, who suddenly was suddenly diagnosed with cancer. He lost that battle last month. Mm -hmm. Remember Gary as he lost the battle to cancer. Uh, lift them up in our hearts and mind during today's worship, but also throughout the week. Let us pray. And in every petition, pause in silence. God of mystery and grace, even in the midst of abundant gifts, there is heartache and sorrow and evil and pain. Even as Jesus proclaimed the coming of his kingdom, Herod sent soldiers to silence John the Baptist, who preached about righteousness, truth, and how we should live as individuals within our families, within our communities. Even as we believe that your realm is among us and around us and within us, our hearts sink when we hear of oppression and violence, gun violence. When we hear of leaders who live in extravagant wealth while the people do not have enough to eat. Even as we do what we can to heal the sick, to clothe the naked, to love our neighbors as ourselves. We cry out to you for the justice and peace that only you can bring. We lift up Jim Relka the gun violence that we couldn't even imagine in the 21st century during the time of leadership of our country, voice in public. We remember Jim Peterson. We lift up Eileen, Gary, and those who have weight with their health, especially cancers. Hear our prayers for the swift coming of your realm, Holy One, and we speak them in words or hold them silently in our hearts. And now, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Robin Price. My pronouns are she, her, but my favorite pronouns are you and us. And um, the song I was going to sing today was a lovely thing by Bernstein, and maybe you'll hear it another day, but my accompanist is ill. So I also got to turn on a dime this morning, but we'll see what comes out. I'm, I'm never quite sure until, until it happens. <laughs> My life goes on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the sweet though far off songs That hail a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm while to the rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? And though the tempest around me roars, I know the truth it liveth. And though the darkness around me pours, I know the songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm. I hear the music ringing. Since love is Lord of heaven, how can I keep from singing? And though the tempest round me roars, so I know the truth it liveth. And though the darkness around me pours, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm While to the rock I'm clinging Since love is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? Since love is Lord of heaven Can I keep from singing? Thank you, Robin. That was lovely. Our reading this morning is from 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and 12b through 19. We are reading from the Inclusive Bible. David again called up the warriors of Israel and picked 30,000 elite fighters. Then David and the whole force set out for Baalah in Judah to return to the Ark of God, which bears the name of Yahweh who sits enthroned above the cherubim. The Ark of God was placed on a new cart and removed from the house of Adinadab on the hill. 
Uzzah and Ohio walked out before it, while David and all the people of Israel celebrated to their heart's content before Yahweh with songs, uh, lyres, tambourines, rattles, and cymbals. When David heard that Yahweh had blessed Obed-Edom's family and household, David went down and brought the ark up from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When the bearers of the ark of Yahweh took their first six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fatted calf. David, wearing a linen ephod, danced before Yahweh with all his might, while he and his whole house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh with shouts and the sound of trumpet. As the ark entered the city of David, Saul's daughter, Nico, looked down through the window and saw David leaping and dancing before Yahweh, and his display disgusted her. The ark of the covenant was brought in and set in its place with the tent David had set up for it. Then David made burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yahweh. Finishing the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, the ruler blessed the people in the name of Yahweh. Then he distributed among the people of Israel present to each man and woman a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins, and all the people returned to their homes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Adam and Gretchen. So amazing to, to hear and listen to the worship in this passage of Second Samuel. I invite you to bow your head and pray with me to begin our sermon. And I'm using some of the words of Bob Berth, uh, Taylor Brown, Brown Taylor. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, to our souls. Inspire and enlighten us with celestial fire. With your presence, nothing else matters. Without your purpose, nothing else is essential. We humbly seek your presence. Amen. Brothers and sisters of Christ, I greet to you in the name of our Lord. I thank you for greeting me last week with beautiful flowers. And so grateful to see each of you who are here and also those who is attending on our en uh, online environment. If you are new here, we are glad that you are here. C.S. Lewis, a theologian, he quoted these words about purpose. For you will certainly carry out God's purpose, however you act. But it makes a difference to you whether you serve like Judas or like John. David, King David's endeavor to transfer the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem with the purpose of reinstating proper worship signifies significant historical, political, and religious task. I grew up in a church environment, as you heard earlier, some of our members' contexts. My father was a PK, which is pastor's kid, <laughs> 
and my mother being an educator. They made sure that we attend church and Sunday school regularly. Their purpose is to keep our faith as it was built on obedience to my parents, but also understanding God's love and my curiosity about humanity, creation, the church, and the community. Our family tradition was to attend the worship service at Sayone, in the capital of Tonga, where the king attends each Sunday, the 10 o'clock service, followed by a meal prepared in the umu, that's foreign language to you, which is an earth oven, probably some in Hawaii where, and <laughs> yes, Joe, um, that you dig out the earth, and then you put some rocks and then fire, and then you put the food on top of it, and then put back some greens and then the earth and bake them underground. So my parents and my brothers normally put in some taro, yams, tapioca, combined with lupulu. This is the best, which I'm going to bring on at sometimes in the future at our, you know, potluck. So lu meaning taro leaves. And we put the taro leaves on top of banana leaves. And then we put some corned beef or lambs, mutton to some of you. And then, of course, some salt and pepper and then onion and garlic and coconut milk, mm. and then you wrap it and put together with the starch and cook them. So after the worship service and lunch, we have to return back to church for Sunday school at 2 p.m. and participated in an additional hour of Christian education. That's Sunday school for us. Sometimes I walk and I heard music from another church and then decided to kind of go there because it's a shortcut. But we were told you have to attend Sunday school. This week's Hebrew scripture, also known as the Old Testament from 2 Samuel, the kingmaker, right? focuses on David and his leadership in constant battle with the Philistines. His actions were guided by his deep faith and continuous seeking of God's guidance, which sharply contrasts with the approach of the first king, Saul. David resolutely seeks divine guidance, receives direction and strategic insights. Chapter 5, which is prior to chapter 6 that Adam and Gretchen read for us, details his rise to the throne in Israel as conquers Jerusalem from the Jebusites. He then establishes the religious and political center in the city of David, Jerusalem, a location not belonging to any of the Israelites' tribes. Because of times and time again, they were against each other with their various perspectives. The second Samuel recounts how, after two decades, David remembers the ark of God, which had been with the house of Abinadab. He orchestrates the retrieval of the ark 
rallying 30,000. Can you imagine? 30,000 leaders and troops to carry out this monumental task. What was the purpose of the ark? The ark was believed to contain the presence of Yahweh, the God of the Israelites. It was said to symbolize God's presence for the people. The ark served several practical purposes, like, for example, number one, the Levites. They were the one who was supposed to carry the task of carrying the ark. As you remember, they, when the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, the Levites tasked to carry the ark. And then the ark inside, it carried the Ten Commandments. It also safeguarded the Israelites, especially in battle. And when David brought the ark to Jerusalem, it served as a virtual, virtual temple. I recently encountered a seminarian, one of my friends, who delivered a sermon at a church in Washington, D.C. So after the service, a gentleman, I will name him Danny, he expressed to her an issue that he had stopped attending church due to perceiving too much political message. The student reassured and urged Danny to dedicate weekly devotional time in engaging with scripture, perhaps a weekly lectionary in preparation for Sunday service. And she also recommended that he return to church, return to church with a purpose of nurturing his soul emphasizing the joy of spiritual fulfillment that extends beyond the church walls. She reminded Danny of the promise that Jesus chose you. You as plural. Underscoring the importance of engaging with the community, identifying the community's needs, and then serving God's purpose as a means to bless others. Here, the ark is removed to Jerusalem in two stages, interrupted by a serious crisis. It was kind of in between of the passages that we heard this morning. The process begins with a grand ceremony where the ark is taken from Abinadab's house. David's followers perhaps remember after 20 years where the ark was, right? Before its recovery and restoration to public life in Israel, which was done with great royal pomp, royal ceremony. The scripture narrates the first move of the ark of God, which encountered the problem. Remember the problem. They placed the ark on a new cart where the two sons, Uzzah and Ahio, Abnadab's sons, guided or led the cart. Unfortunately, it is uncertain who decided to use animals and a cart to transport the cart, the ark. Nevertheless, this choice resulted in the loss of Uzzah's life. I am left to contemplate, contemplate whether David sought divine guidance before dispatching the troops to 
retrieved the ark. Additionally, I ponder whether using the new cards or new ideas or new initiative was driven by political motives rather than a genuine initiative to bring back the proper worship practice. For justification, when we face our daily challenges, we don't just focus on celebrating joyous moments, we also pay attention to our concerns, worries, and struggles. Our communion Sunday worship last week involves offerings, blessings, and communal feasts. The economic religion and worship, but also social context, the feast that we shared the bread and wine with each other. Once again, just like we learned in Sunday school, I'm excited to share my first ministry experience in Washington, D.C. So during this time, I engaged in listening and noting sessions with the youth ministry and the Sunday school children's ministry. Together, we identified a pressing need in the community and organized group outings to provide meals to individuals facing food insecurity. While I fully supported this initiative, I also emphasized the importance of integrating our discipleship ministry with this service and implementing a training strategy to help those in need integrating into the community, to bring them, not only provide what they need, but then perhaps find something that is bigger than that to provide wholeness, to bring them back to the community. Seeing both ministries acknowledge the need to address this issue and recognize the importance of serving beyond the church walls was heartening the younger generations. Passion for righteous justice and faithful service was inspiring. As we move forward, it is clear that collaboration and unity will be key in our efforts to work on various missions and ministry initiatives. I am eagerly looking forward to the opportunity to collaborate with our new children, youth, and family, CYF minister in the near future. Look at our young ones. When David reverently brought the ark of God into the city, he immediately adjusted the transportation strategy. That was the second one. Remember, Abinadab and here's Abed-Edom. He adjusted the transportation strategy to the traditional way. According to the Amplified Bible Translation, as the bearers of the ark took six steps, six steps, David offered ox and fattened calf as a sacrifice. Filled with great enthusiasm, David danced before the Lord, wearing effort, the priest, the high priest, linen effort, to bless the community as they walk and march with God. 
the house of Israel, brought the ark to the city of David, where they accompanied by joyous shouts and the resounding sound of trumpets. While this was David's public action, one can only imagine the impact on his own family. Did they join the celebration or have just guarded their hearts with their own perspective as seen through the response of Michal, the daughter of Saul? The traditional, the older monarchy. You know that story, you're going to get into that yourself, but God and trust and powers and judges the people of Israel to return to the act of worship with the ark and engage with the world. It is a testament to the power of collective efforts when we come together for the betterment of God's creation. This involves recognizing our compassion and reconciling with our oppressed and the marginalized community, addressing issues such as climate change, health care, mental health, poverty, gender, inequality, racism, school bullying, gun violence, and more. This serves, the scripture serves as a poignant reminder of our joint duty to seek God's guidance in our work. Together we can confront obstacles and navigate uncertainties bolstered by our steadfast faith and dedication. Going back to Danny, who asked about the seminarian student's preacher's personal feelings about worship. He found his way back to church community because of the understanding and understanding of the guidance and support that he received. The climax of my Sunday school experience in Tonga as I joined the teaching and experienced that. After my high school years and during my last year in Tonga, I had the opportunity and privilege of being the Sunday school teacher for two of the current king's royal children. Today, the eldest is the crown prince of Tonga. Furthermore, the Sunday school in DC, a vital part of our church, plays a significant role in keeping the church alive. We are responsible for nurturing and fostering our children with their curiosity and growth for the future. Not only the church, but the community in our world. Through their expressions of worship and their role in guiding and supporting the passionate and dedicated individuals in the community, they carry the torch for the future of church. These individuals possess the love and seal preserve traditional practices while embracing new locations, initiatives, and outreach efforts to engage with the wider community. Looking ahead, the retrieval of the ark serves as an opportunity for the strong propaganda effort to establish the new regime as the rightful successor to the old tribal order. Simultaneously, the narrative acknowledges and reserves or reveres the tribal vitality of the past, asserting the royal legitimacy, the ark, legitimate, the royalty of the future. 
Reflecting on the past, David's arrival at the Ark demonstrates genuine religious devotion. However, looking ahead, David's actions have an undertone of political analysis and perhaps manipulation. David's wish to build a house for God was set aside on the second narrative, and God promised him an everlasting dynasty. Fulfilling the messianic hope through David's house, God will provide salvation for Israel. The community needs the message of the gospel that Jesus Christ taught his disciples, encouraging them to spread the teachings, heal, and transformation of the world. This ark, our gospel, Jesus, this will involve in implementing new methods to reach people and developing an updated strategy for nurturing and guiding new disciples, involving new outreach initiatives, and a fresh discipleship strategy. Remember, God has chosen you for a specific purpose. Let us pray. Your presence and love surpass our being. Touch our hearts to live purposefully, purposefully and do your will. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. This time uh, is our prayer of dedication. Uh, my understanding, pre-COVID and even this time, we do not pass around plates, but there are opportunities for you if you have gifts that you want to give back to the church to further the mission of the church, the community, and the world. There are boxes or perhaps ashes. For those online, use the QR code and also our giving online. Let us pray. The earth is yours, O Lord, and all that is in it. All we have comes from the richness of your grace. As you have blessed us, so may we bless others. May these offerings bind us to your love for us and to your love for all the world's people. Amen. We're kind of scurrying about, but we'll get there. Promise. <laughs> this is an impromptu opportunity. Oh, yeah. I wanted the big mic. Green mic. No. <laughs> Give her the green mic, people. Do the yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Not too much to say, but we have a reception today after the service, and um, please come. We'll share some information about the local area, depending on you. And we're having cake, and we're going to meet the family. And Joe's going to introduce the family right now. Thank you, Cindy. Good morning, church. Good morning. <clears throat> wow. It feels kind of cooler now than it did at the beginning of service. Whatever uh, Tom Bresky did or God did, <laughs> at least we've got some cool air blowing through. I want to just take a minute today uh, to greet uh, Pastor Mele's family, immediate family, her husband, uh, Langi Loloa, and daughter, Anapuli. Uh, please come forward. Come, please. I'm going to offer them a greeting also in Tongan, and I hope I don't step all over this, but it is meant to be a blessing and showing of respect. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for being among us. Thank you. Pastor Mele, come. Thank you, Joe. 
This is my husband, Rangi Loa. He remains in Washington when we, Anapuli and I, were in Washington, D.C. So Anapuli graduated from high school uh, a couple weeks ago, and she is due to move on to, in the fall, later in, in next um, August, to New York, uh, continue her um, higher education there. At St. John's University, uh, majoring in neuroscience. I also have my cousin here, and a sister, and also niece, Elena. So grateful, and I think some friends. So we'll meet uh, them at the, during the uh, reception. We're so grateful and honored. Thank you. Thank you. Please rise as you're able for our closing song before we go to the French Before the Lord, go to share God's blessings with others. As you journey forth, express Christ's love with the world. Go and claim the inheritance of Christ in the name of our God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. Amen. Amen. And a reminder, there's coffee, the best coffee in the state. There's cookies, there's cake, and there's Laura Lee playing us out for the prelude. Please thank her, because she just jumped into this with no warning at all and is doing marvelous. So thank you, Laura Lee.